Hi guys, Alex here. Welcome back to Girl Talk. I've got a little bit of mess and a little bit of drama today for you guys. For today's video, which is long overdue, we are going to go ahead and talk about the rise and fall of Miss Young Dumb Honey Bun. She's dumb. She is. We will go ahead and start at the beginning, how she achieved her notoriety here on YouTube and go through her many scandals over the years, because trust me, there are quite a few and these get juicy. All that leading to her inevitable demise. How did she go from being one of the most popular channels here in Girl World to a controversial niche figure discussed on Reddit forums? Let me go ahead and insert this disclaimer right now. This is not an Amberlynn defense video, although we will be discussing Amberlynn as Honey Bun was an Amberlynn reaction channel. So that's a very important part of the story. Now that that's out of the way, let's just get right into it. I mean, shallowy. In order to understand the psychology of Young Dumb Honey Bun, kidding. We need to start from the beginning. Picture this, it was 2019. Amberlynn Reed had reached a new highest weight. Reaction channels were at their peak and the drama surrounding our girl had ramped up to 10. Shrimpgate, Octavia, Torrid Halls. With that came new reaction channels, including yours truly and a clip channel called Young Dumb Honey Bun. Yes, YDHB began her channel not by doing commentary on ALR, but instead she took a bunch of clips, put them together and created something new. Since then, all of those videos have been deleted and little evidence remains of the videos. She gained a large chunk of her subscriber base from, but just to give you guys an idea of what she was producing at the time, they included gems like Amber Lynn pronouncing words wrong for two two and a half minutes and Amber Lynn and her concealed knuckles. Even before showing her face, Sarah found herself the subject of controversy with people accusing her of taking other people's clips and just straight up adding them to her compilations instead of looking for the original footage on Amber's channel. That was her very first controversy, but there would be many more to come. Let me just say this video would probably be so much easier if Sarah didn't delete everything regarding Amberlynn from her channel, but I was around the whole time and so were a lot of you guys. Around the middle to the end of 2019, YouTube implemented new rules, not unlike what they're doing right now, but at that time they were taking aim at what they called reused content. Sarah, relying solely on other people's content to produce her videos, began to get worried about losing her channel, so she decided to start doing reactions to Amberlynn, which is what most people remember her for today. Sarah positioned herself as an educated woman, an educated immigrant woman who had a degree, who was studying psychology and who was in med school, so that gave her an edge when dissecting Amberlynn's content. She always had an air of I'm better than you because I have a degree. And I remember when she was a compilation channel, she would post these random photos of herself just looking bougie as a way to sort of flex on Amber Lynn. Like, look at me. Look at her. We are nothing alike. But I'm spending my time putting together clip videos of Amber Lynn. I don't know. Color me a hypocrite, but I'm not pretending to be some bougie queen, girl. I'm trash. So Sarah continued on with her reactions in her post-compilation era and enjoyed moderate success. That is, until everything changed. June 2020, Amberlynn Reed was diagnosed with cancer. But before we get into that, let's back up a couple of weeks to May 21st, 2020. Sarah released a video titled, My Thoughts on Amber Lynn, Doctor Shopping and Snapchat Rant. This was a reaction to Amber's well-known, despectful POS rant. You are not happy within your life, and you are a despectful piece of sh**. And it spawned Young Dumb Honey Buns, cringiest clip, an iconic moment in girl world history, and no video about Sarah is complete without discussing the coconut oil rant. Miguel, I'm in med school. I work full time. I have a degree. I have a whole ass beautiful man by my side. 
I have a family that loves me. We all take care of each other. We love each other. My skin is clear. My makeup is flawless. I am living my best life. My hair is growing. I smell like coconut oil. I am living my best life. And now, I will go further. I will go beyond the superficial, beyond what the eye can see. I am an educated woman. I am an educated immigrant woman who has came here with no language, who is now speaking two languages fluently, who has a career, who has ambitions and goals in life. Regardless of the coinage that I make on YouTube of your name, I have a successful life. Mm -hmm. Immediately, people took issue with the fact that she had positioned herself as a therapist type figure. Where was the empathy? Not only that, flexing on Amberlynn Reed, it just isn't necessary. It screams insecurity, does it not? If you really need to tell everyone how much better you are than ALR, maybe you're not that much better after all. Also, I think the worst part about it was the line, I have a family that loves me. Regardless of how you feel about Amber, that was a low blow. I mean, she's insinuating that Amber doesn't have a family that loves her. And consider the timing. Of course, she had no idea that Amber would be diagnosed just a couple of weeks later, but that didn't make her look any better. Right before the diagnosis, Sarah had another controversy. This time, it was surrounding merch or clothes that she was selling. The issue here stemmed from this t-shirt with a line drawing of Amber Lynn that Honey Bun actually did herself. People thought that it was too much that she was profiting off of Amber Lynn's image in this way. But Sarah ended up excusing the merch by stating that Amber Lynn is a terrible person, so what does it matter? You complain about ALR making money off of her situation, but now it's okay if you're the one doing it? This is rather tasteless because I don't eat myself to unalive on camera. So if she can get 15K a month for stuffing her face and scamming people, you are salty because I'll make coinage off of one sentence. Girl, bye. She didn't even spell sentence right. <laughs> so much for that degree. Pressure continued to mount for her to remove the merch, and eventually she did. Amber Lynn responded to the merch by saying it's sad because she wouldn't be able to sell merch of her own or have viewers if it wasn't for me. Poor girl, lol. Just a week and a half after all of this mess, Amber came on to announce that she had been diagnosed with cancer. And many reaction channels, including myself, Whitey HB, Zachary Michael, pretty much everybody, as far as I can recall, decided to put a pause on Amber reactions. At that time, there was a growing movement against the ALR reaction channels, including Whitey HB, and Amber's diagnosis caused things to ramp up to 10, switching the spotlight for critique from Amber herself to the reaction channels. Not a single channel was safe. So for the rest of June and July, Sarah turned her attention away from Amberlynn and to fat acceptance and some videos talking about herself. It didn't last long because on approximately July 30th, 2020, YDHB came on to say reactions are back. Um, if she wants to profit off this, you know, cancer journey of, and it's, it's not a bad thing if she wants to put out videos documenting it and then, you know, using this money to pay her medical bills or just well, do whatever she wants. That's fine. That's up to her. But for me to also profit off her cancer journey was a little bit too far. Yes, it was too far even for me. She said that that's what people wanted. So she was here to provide our generous queen. I remember watching Sarah's reactions right after she came back while ALR was still dealing with the tail end of her cancer journey, and Sarah's attitude had completely shifted, it came across super fake to me. I mean, I get it. She's still recovering from cancer. You can't exactly be the same old mean girl that you were. It's not going to be a good look. But the way that she came for Amber in the previous videos versus the post-cancer videos where she was trying to give Amber advice, where she would state things like, I just want to see the best for her. It was like a completely different person. It was clear that she wanted to keep her channel. She wanted to keep the money coming in. And she wanted to minimize some of the criticism that she was receiving from the way that she spoke about Amber over the years. Listen, honey, the only person, the only thing who could say that they are a strong bitch and will continue to be a strong bitch is
conspiring in these because they ain't got no choice. So throughout 2021, she continued on with her ALR reactions, a few videos on Foodie Beauty here and there. Sarah got engaged. She got a dog named Detro. She started a podcast called Psych Flow. She started doing a lot of live streaming and had a brief stint as a gym girly doing vlog updates and Instagram pictures. We're not really going to get into this, but there has been a lot of Photoshop scandals over the years when it comes to YDHB. She very much loves to facetune her photos, and I've never seen someone do that many edits. It's kind of like a Kardashian situation. Like, she will take her head and make it smaller. Apparently, that's a trend I never heard of. You will see warping in the background where she made her posterior larger, things like that. In 2022, and I'm not saying this to shame her, but it was clear that she had put on weight. In one of her gym girly vlogs, she had claimed that she was putting on muscle in the past couple of months. She was quickly called out by community bodybuilder Chikara Transformations in a video titled Bodybuilder Reacts to Young Dumb Honey Bun, You Gained Fat not muscle. I mean, there is a sort of delicious irony in someone gaining weight while reacting to Amber Lynn, is there not? I mean, it happened to me. I do remember during the summer of 2020 and getting the comments like, you're, you're, you're gaining, you're gaining. Hypocrite, hypocrite. That was a moment. And like I said, at that time, Sarah started live streaming more. That wasn't something that she had done too much in the past, but that led Sarah to be confronted on her BS, namely medical school, bringing us to med school gate. A lot of people were suspicious about Sarah's credentials. She would say that she had a psych degree, that she was in medical school. She would always post these pictures in bed, studying with her computer. She's editing Amber Lynn while also looking at a psychology book. Just giving like, I'm an intellectual woman, right? Nothing wrong with that. But remember the coconut oil rant? How could you forget? Baby girl, I'm in med school. Not just that, but all of the content that she had done, placing herself upon a pedestal. My opinion matters more because I'm a med student. I have a degree. Well, it turns out she wasn't in medical school the whole time. Elizabeth, hello, why did you lie about being in medical school? Now it's time to start spinning the story around. And she does this by a lie of omission. She leaves out information. She leaves out crucial information and twists the small bits. You know what? When you see these clips of YDHB talking to Amber Lynn, the projection is so real. Like this whole time when she was reacting to Amber, it was her own insecurities on full display. Baby girl, I'm in med school. And if you don't know, I am a medical student. I am currently in med school. Why do you lie about being in medical school? I got into a medical school and then I um, changed at the last minute. So I hope that helps. I got into Queen Mary's Medical School and then I was offered a PhD there and I declined both <laughs> because I can't afford it. And then I just didn't tell anyone. So when people were like, are you in med school? I was like, you know what? I don't need people to <laughs> dox me like they did last time. So I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? Um, I have never seen anyone so confidently stupid. So what had happened is she had got into a medical school but wasn't able to afford it. I mean, that would have been fine if she was just honest about it, right? College is ridiculously expensive. Nobody can afford med school unless they have rich parents. Like, be for real. The problem was she had used her position in med school to validate her critiques of Amber Lynn. A lot of the times claiming she's a narcissist, right? Although I did see a clip where she said, there's no way I can diagnose her. She all but diagnosed her with narcissistic personality disorder. Now, could you argue she has those traits. Sure, I'm not going to push back against that. I've watched our girl for many, many years. A lot of people think that. Sarah's excuse, she didn't want to say she wasn't in med school because she would be doxxed. Does that even make sense? So you lie to your audience faces to control the narrative. So you outright are saying that we can't trust you at all because you purposefully want to confuse your audience at times in order to further your own narrative. So we can't trust a word that comes out of your mouth. Okay, thank you. The writing was really on the wall when Amber Lynn actually called out YDHB in September 2022 when Sarah actually said that Amber started Ozempic to, quote, cheat her way out of weight loss. Ozempic to try and cheat her way out of weight loss to try oh. and just take it instead of actually doing anything so i have a few things to say about that and but i think that's really rude with most people taking amber lynn's side over sarah well let's just say things didn't look so great 
I agree. Anything that can help you lose weight. I don't see Ozempic as cheating your way out of weight loss. After med school gate, it would seem as though everything Sarah did was looked at with a hint of suspicion. And her ALR reactions, well, the views began to decline. And it was clear if you paid attention to her videos at the time that she was losing interest. So what was a girl to do? Well, she had one last trick up her sleeve. Sarah decided that she was leaving the left. Yes, despite being mostly apolitical on her channel, she was going to ditch the Amberlynn Reed content and instead do right-wing commentary. I think what she was trying to aim for was something like Blair White or the comment section with Brett Cooper. Even before her video leaving the left, people could see it coming as she discussed news stories only found in conservative publications. But Sarah's videos were vapid and most importantly, not entertaining. There's nothing the right likes more than a pretty woman that shares their views, so I could see there being an audience out there for her somewhere, but the problem was finding that audience. I mean, the audience that Sarah had accumulated from her reactions skewed younger. She had many LGBTQ audience members, young women. It just wasn't going to work out. And then she cemented her new channel rebrand with a new name, the unpopular opinion with Sarah, and her most discussed video to date, Why I'm Leaving the Left. The backlash was swift and severe. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most self-imposed culture war-esque, melodramatic, victim complex, poorly logically constructed videos that I have seen in a minute. Tell me you don't understand feminism without saying you don't understand feminism. Are you, are you oppressed right now? Well, it depends what you mean. Well, have you ever felt oppressed? Well, no. Have you ever been denied opportunities because you're a woman? No. Have you ever been denied opportunities because you are an immigrant and a woman? Well, no. I've actually become exactly who I want to be and I have been granted so many more opportunities because I was a woman and because I am an immigrant. And so what are you talking about? Sarah wants you to know that she is not a victim and that she has never faced any roadblocks because she's a woman. So feminism bad. <laughs> I mean, that's great for her, but not everybody could say the same. Sarah states the following. I have made the, the decision to present as as far away from the left as almost humanly possible because I cannot anymore take the insanity and the contradiction and the wokeness Anymore. What kind of examples does she present? Well, teenagers on TikTok that are clearly trying to get a rise out of people. <laughs> to make matters worse, less than a month after leaving the left, in an interesting turn of events, Sarah came on to beg for money. No, I'm serious. Her dog was experiencing overnight hind leg weakness and he needed a CT scan and x-rays. Sarah claimed that she had up to 3k in insurance but drops the PayPal anyway. People were quick to point to her high-end makeup posts, lip filler, face filler, tattoos. All the money that she had made from the ALR reactions seemed to have been pissed away on body mods. People were still upset from the recent switch up and those that were sticking around were not willing to open up their pocketbooks. I'd like to know if she even received a single cent. For just two short months, Sarah made content focusing on trans people, feminism equals bad, and fat phobia, before eventually throwing in the towel and giving up, effectively canceling herself. But in Sarah's mind, oh no. According to her, the reason she left YouTube is because real life got busy, more important, and more interesting. It was never forever. It couldn't be that the majority of her audience had turned against her and she had become a bit of a laughing stock in the community, unable to own up to a single mistake she had made over the years. No, not that. Anything but that. So there you have it, guys. Nowadays, you can still find Sarah on Instagram, posting selfies, posting her coffee, filler updates. I believe she's still with her man, Owen, but I don't think they've gotten married yet. People on Reddit were discussing that specifically and said it's because she just doesn't have the money for the wedding that she wants. And Sarah obviously appreciates the finer things in life, so I don't think she's willing to settle. I think a big factor in the end of her YouTube career was her inability to laugh at herself. Everything was so serious. The coconut oil rant. How do you deal with something that cringe? Well... You make fun of it too. That's the only way to deal with it. And of course, there was the whole wannabe Blair White thing. I don't think that went over so well with her audience. 
The only videos that she still has up on her channel is this brief stint into right-wing commentary. That's what she has chosen to be remembered by. Even though most people will remember her for her Amberlynn Reed reactions, her lip filler, and her coconut oil rant. All right, you guys, that's going to be it for today's video. I had a lot of fun making this one, so go ahead and leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I will, of course, catch you guys in the next one. All right. Bye, guys.